this video, I'll try to turn a battery into a wireless Bluetooth speaker, and that's going to be a pretty tough challenge. For this project, I picked out these batteries with a pink bunny on the package. I had to remove everything inside, but since the battery was still fully charged, I didn't want to perform a surgery on it in this state. To make use of the stored energy, I grabbed a small toy car motor and a little clamp. Using some blue electrical tape, I attached the motor to the clamp, added a propeller and fixed the battery in place so that the motor was touched by the contacts. And just like that, we get a stylish portable fan, perfect for cooling off a cat on a hot summer day. Three days later, the battery was finally drained and I secured it in a vise to start drilling a hole in the bottom. I began with a thin drill and gradually switched to a thicker one. Then I used a rotary tool with a high carbon steel bit, since the casing turned out to be surprisingly tough. When the hole was large enough, I wrapped the battery with tape to protect the surface from flying metal fragments. For safety reasons, I decided to put on a rubber glove, as I had no idea what could be waiting inside. Using a pair of pliers, I managed to pull out the core of the battery. After that, I started scraping out the softer contents inside with a popsicle stick. Eventually, I got a grip on the denser inner layers and pulled out some kind of a polythylene shell. After about a minute, I completely removed the remnant of the bottle cap. At that point, all that was left was to use a screwdriver to scrape out the black carbon stuck in the inner walls of this little shaft. Once that was done, I thoroughly cleaned the inside of the battery with alcohol. For the sound from the speaker inside to be heard properly, I needed to drill holes in the top part of the battery. I first tried to mark the spots with a ruler, but as you can see, the result was far from great. That's when I came up with a brilliant idea, to 3D print a special drilling template with perfectly aligned 60 holes. But there was a problem, the drill bit could easily slip during the drilling and scratch the case. So I upgraded the template design by added reinforced guiding channels that would lock the drill bit in place, making the chance of error almost zero. I secured the template onto the battery with reusable zip ties and then reinforced everything with hot glue. After all, if the stencil shifts by even a millimeter, I'd have to redo the entire process from scratch. Very carefully and slowly, I started drilling dozens of sound holes into the case, hoping it would all work out. I deactivated the hot glue gun with alcohol and removed the template. And just look at this! The holes lined up perfectly in straight rows. Without the guiding stencil, achieving such precision would have been nearly impossible. The edges of the holes were a little rough. So I decided to smooth them out and slightly widen them using a diamond bit on a rotary tool. Next, I went online and for just $6 found this circuit board designed for building a Bluetooth speaker. I also ordered a very small speaker, just the right size to fit through the drilled opening, and a tiny battery to power the whole setup, and a push button to turn the speaker on. For working with the circuit board, I got myself a holding clamp with magnifying glass from AliExpress, along with a special hot air gun that melts solder with heated air. First, I had to desolder the USB USB charging port and these two tiny LEDs. Each LED is about 1mm in size. You can actually see how badly my hands were shaking and how hard it was to even grab them. One LED indicates when the Bluetooth speaker is turned on, while the other lights up when the charger is connected. After that, I have to solder two wires to each of those LEDs using a soldering iron with this massive chunky tip. It felt almost impossible. The camera lens zooms in perfectly, so you can see everything clearly. But with my own eyes, it was nearly impossible to make out what was happening. Just look at how enormous that soldering tip is. I don't even have a thinner one, so it took me quite a while to complete the task. 
Now, we needed to remove the power button from the board and solder the wires onto a new red button. That day, I finally received a charging connector, so I had a full set of parts required to assemble the inner components of our speaker. Soldering all the wires and components together was a little easier this time. The main thing was not to mix everything up. Otherwise, everything could burn out the moment I powered it on. Eventually, I ended up with this strange-looking creature with wires sticking out everywhere. I pressed the power button, and it seemed to be working. The LED was glowing. Perfect. Nevertheless, there was still a lot of work to do, because before placing everything inside a battery case, I had to take it all apart again. Then, I designed this simple layout in Photoshop, showing where the buttons and the LEDs should go on the case, and printed it out in paper. After that, I covered the picture with masking tape, put the sheet back into the printer, and printed the layout once again. This way, the ink stuck to the tape, and after peeling it off, I got a perfect sticky template that I could place directly onto the battery case. Now, it was time to drill the openings. I had to be extremely careful so the drill bit wouldn't slip and scratch the surface. After that, I widened each hole to the exact size and shape using a special bit. A quick test fit for the charging port. Looks perfect. The button also fits nicely into its place. First of all, I needed to secure the speaker right at the end of the battery case. To prevent it from moving around, I designed and 3D printed this small sleeve that would hold the speaker in position. Thanks to this little slot, I could easily push it inside the case and slide it to the right spot. I was planning to fix most of the parts in place using this special glue that hardens instantly when exposed to ultraviolet light just like the fillings at a dentist's office. If I hadn't disassembled everything back into spare parts, I probably wouldn't have been able to place the components inside properly. The LEDs were first fixed right behind their respective holes with a piece of tape. Then I put a drop of glue directly into the hole and cured it. After removing the tape, I added more glue onto the inside for extra strength. Once all the components were in place, every wire had to be soldered back to the board. And then, the board itself could finally go into the speaker case. I could have glued everything in permanently, but if I ever needed to repair or replace the battery, that would have been a huge problem. So instead, I simply filled the empty space with a piece of flexible foam and designed a bottom cover that resembles the original end cap of the battery. The cover snapped into place perfectly and fit nicely and tightly. After many days of work, I was finally able to finish the project. Time for the real test. Will it actually work? And how will it sound? Wow! I was worried that the metal casing will make it sound muffled, but it's actually really impressive for a speaker this small. I spent two weeks sourcing the parts, planning everything out and putting this little device together. Looking at the result, I can honestly say that it was worth it. 